Welcome back to Going Solo. I'm Rick, and in this week's episode, we'll be taking Hans and Lori into the Sacred Groves. Before we begin, there are some special setup and special rules for the Sacred Grove, so we'll go over those now. A uh, special setup is uh, that you will see there are a couple new things on the board here. Uh, first over here we have a D Divine Wrath Tracker. Uh, this is going to start at level 2 and it can increase and decrease throughout the game. We also have an add-on for the Bloodlust Tracker, uh, which describes what happens to the environment as the game progresses and as, um, <clears throat> as the killer's bloodlust increases. Uh, so there are different things that can happen in the board or on the board as uh, as the game progresses. We also have two new um, action cards. Uh, well, one new action card, but there's two copies of it, and that is called Atonement, which allows us to decrease the Divine Wrath Tracker. Uh, so the Divine Wrath Tracker could be quite detrimental uh, to the game. As it um, as it increases, uh, once we get to a spot marked Unleash, where we would unleash the uh, Divine Wrath, then <clears throat> the things that could happen uh, get progressively worse. Uh, so here's the special rules. Here's how all of this works. Uh, so some cards or Bloodlust Track events will tell us to increase Divine Wrath by a specific number. Um, on the Bloodlust track, usually that has to do with how many victims are on sacred spaces, which are the spaces marked in red on the board. So we have the Burial Grounds, the Sacred Shrine, and the Holy Groves. Uh, so we usually, uh, when we increase from the Bloodlust track, uh, we'll increase by the number of victims on a sacred space. So that's something I want to work on um, early on, of course, is to get people off of those sacred spaces. Because that could be, with, with so many people on them, that can make the Divine Wrath shoot up like crazy. Um, so, also, whenever Bloodlust increases, uh, there are events that happen with the Sacred Groves, uh, usually dealing with the Divine Wrath. Um, also, once the finale is revealed, we have this extra token that goes on the end of it. So once the finale is revealed, every killer phase, we would unleash Divine Wrath and increase it by one. So our goal here is to try to kill Hans before the, um, <clears throat> the finale. Uh, that's ideal uh, because if we hit the finale, it's going to be extremely difficult. All right, uh, I think that is just about all of the special rules. The vacation had been Lucy's idea. After everything that's happened, we need a break, a chance to reset. Lori was sure this had something to do with Lucy's newfound religion, but she wasn't even going to try to say no this time. Lucy continued, the groves will be our chance to find inner peace and holiness. Yep, definitely the religious thing. To Lucy's credit, the groves were quite beautiful, and Lori could feel the calming effect on her soul. Eventually, they found their way to a place called the Holy Groves, and Lucy insisted on praying there, while the Holy Master made his journey. Lori didn't know what the hell she was talking about, she tended to space out whenever Lucy went on about the particulars of her religion. So she left Lucy to her prayers and went exploring. When she heard the screams ring out over the gently rolling hills, Lori knew that he had found her once again. Damn it, Lucy. What have you gotten us into? Would she ever be free of Hans? Would she ever truly find inner peace? Okay. So we are here in the divine, in the sacred groves, with Lori, and Hans has uh, just made his appearance. Um, now we do have a special condition uh, with this scenario: is that the girlfriend 
uh, who comes from still the uh, Camp Happy Trails, uh, she will not move from the uh, <clears throat> from the holy uh, holy groves until the uh, holy man has made his rounds. Speaking of the holy man, we reveal our first event card, our first and only event card for this scenario, which is the holy man. So, let's see. The victim furthest from the killer is now the holy man. The holy man will not follow you. Every upkeep phase, move the holy man one space towards the killer. When the holy man is in the same space as the killer, immediately remove him from the board. Yeah. If you were... In his space, we decrease this. If you were not in his space, it increases. Uh, ooh, by a total of 10. So basically, we kind of want to be in his space when the holy man gets to the killer. And it doesn't say he is killed, so I don't think that would count as a kill. When the holy man is in the same space as the killer, immediately remove him from the board. So he won't die. He just gets removed from the board when he gets to the killer. And if we're not with him... If we are not with him when that happens, then the divine wrath will go way up. Uh, so basically, we kind of need to escort him. Um, all right. Let's get started. So that's on every upkeep phase. So let's go ahead and start with... The Divine Wrath is going to be tough, so let's go ahead and start with some focus. Uh, so I've got two dice right now. Gotta be careful. Let me just scoot that over. Alright, so I got one success and a partial. Um, I don't think I'll be attacking this round, so I am going to uh, turn that partial into a success. So that I can gain two time as well. Because uh, the, the faster I can get uh, the higher cost cards, I think the better off I'll be here. Um, so next I'm going to go for a walk. Alright, I got one success on that one, so I can move up to one space and I'll lose one time. Uh, so let's see, which would be the best way to go? The Lost and Found does have a trash can lid that I could possibly get. And it's close to some victims <coughs> that I could uh, maybe even get to move away. Let's see. Or I could move up to the burial ground because the lost and found is kind of... <sighs> Let's see, which way should I go? I think I will go to the burial ground and then I'm going to do my other walk. And that is a failure because I do not have two cards that I can discard. So I lose two time either way and I am going to sacrifice a health to move one space. And that will get those victims out so that when my bloodlust goes up I don't have to increase the divine wrath by five because <laughs> I have a feeling it's about to go up when uh, when Hans gets his turn all right so I've got five I've got five time um, let's go ahead and put an atonement card in my hand 
and then with the remaining three, I'll do a distraction so I can try to get the horror level down. Oh, but I don't, I can't move then if I do that. I wouldn't be able to move. That's okay. That's okay. So this resets. Uh, I don't have a place for these now, um, but I'll put them just right down here. All right. <clears throat> so that's my action phase. So now it's Hans's turn. Um, should be used to this by now. He attacks first, but there's nobody to attack. So we draw our first terror card. He just keeps coming. So targeting the closest victim or final girl. Well, first, the horror level increases. Then he targets the closest target, which would be either these or these. And then he moves once and kills once, or attacks once. Um, <clears throat> so let's see here. Which way would be the worst scenario for the final girl? That's what, what I go with. It's the, um, uh, the whatever the horror um, was. Uh, the horror method of determining the ties. Uh, and I believe the worst scenario would be moving here and killing one of these because that leaves two there, which means the Divine Wrath would go up more. All right, so he has killed his first victim, which means our Bloodlust goes up, which also means increase Divine Wrath by the number of victims at the Sacred Spaces. So we have three victims, so one, two, and three. So now if I were to trigger Divine Wrath, I would lose four time immediately. Alright, so that is Hans's turn. Uh, so now it is the panic phase. We do have one victim to panic. That's a three, so he goes, or they go this way. And then we come to the upkeep phase in which the holy man will move towards the killer. So what is the fastest path? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. That's the fastest path. So he will move in this direction. He will not follow me. I know that. So. Uh, and that is all of our upkeep, I believe, so we are back to our turn. Um, so I don't have a lot that I can do this round. Uh, so first we're going to go for a distraction. I did get one success on that. Uh, so that is... Ooh. Horror level reduces, but I lose four time. It reduces only by one. Uh, if I lose two more time, then I can't buy anything, and I really need to buy movement. I'll have walk, though. I'm going to hold on to my atonement card, and I'm also going to hold on to my focus card. So that's all I'm gonna do for this round. Uh, so I've got two points to spend, and it is going to be on a sprint. I will also take my zero cost. Time resets, and the distraction card returns to the tableau. All right. Killer's turn. Nobody to kill in his space. Horrific Hammer Rush. If there are no victims on the board, discard and draw the next terror card. Otherwise, target the closest victim, 
move twice and attack twice. Okay. Uh, the closest victim is going to be this guy because he can't get to these guys in one spot. So he's going to move there and attack. For each victim killed during this attack, increase horror by one. So first bloodlust goes up, which means horror goes up there. And then horror goes up for the kill victim that was killed. All right. Uh, there's nobody to panic because nobody's in his spot, which means the During the upkeep phase, the holy man will move one space towards the killer. And we are back to me. So. What to do here? Um, let's start with trying to focus. And failing miserably, so I just lose two time. Uh, let's try walking. Ooh. We will discard to get a success on that one. So we can move one space. Oh, these aren't dead. They are saved. Oh, I had the card up on the wrong side. Okay. So I've saved two victims. I am going to gain two time with one of them. And reduce the horror level by one with the other. I really would like to get to where the holy man is. Or get to where Hans is. Holy Man's only two spaces away, so I could sprint to get there. So let's give that a shot. Two successes. I get to move three spaces. Let me see, I am going to lose a time, but I get to move three spaces. So I'm assuming Hans is going to move a space. If I assume he's going to move one space during the next turn, he would... I need to be in his space because the holy man's about to be there. And I don't like that. That was a lot quicker than I thought it would be. Okay. So let's think about this. If the holy man... Okay. Okay. I think I'm gonna, just going to have to move into Hans's space. Because I'm trying to work this out where I'm in Hans's space when the Holy Man gets there. I've got three movement. And I've got four time left so I can buy a guard card. Probably even both of them. So that's what I'm going to do. One, two, and three. And I hope that Hans targets me with his terror card. I know he will with his attack, but I hope he does with his terror card. Because if he doesn't, the holy man would be... No, he would move up there because there's more targets. So I'm just going to move here. That way he doesn't get his first attack. And he always moves towards the most targets. Okay, excellent. So he would not move towards the holy man, he's going to move towards those targets, but the holy man is going to move towards him. So I hope that Hans gets some movement. 
that's what I'm hoping for. All right, so I've got four cards that I can get, or four time. I'm gonna take a guard. Um, you know what, I'm gonna take both guard cards. Okay. Now, time resets to six, and it is Hans's turn. Nobody in his space to attack. And he doesn't get to move. But he does get Unholy Rage, which means he does an additional attack, or an additional damage for each attack. So I don't like that. But he doesn't move. Which is a problem for me. Because there's no panic phase and we are once again at the upkeep phase. Which means the holy man will move toward Hans. Let me read this card one more time to make sure I'm understanding correctly. When the holy man is in the same space as the killer, immediately remove him from the board. If you were in his space, decrease the divine wrath by one. If you were not in his space, increase the Divine Wrath by a total of 10. Which means the Divine Wrath goes all the way up to 10. Okay. Oh, I really don't want this to happen here, but let's go. The holy man has left the board, but that at least means that I can save the girlfriend now. So let's, uh... Let's go for an atonement first. Nope. And I don't really have any cards I want to give up, so that is a failure. Which means the horror level goes up and I lose two time. Alright. Let's walk then, or try to at least. Dang it. Okay, I really need to, I really need to do some movement. So I'm gonna get rid of one of my guards and my focus to turn that into a success so that I can move these guys away. And I'll save my other guard. All right. Did I lose time? I think I did. Yes, I lost two time from atonement. And then I lost one time from walk. So I've got three left. Let's go ahead and grab another atonement and a close call. And of course, our zero cost. Alright, so, nobody for Hans to kill there. He wants fresh blood. If there are no victims on the board, but there are, so no problems there. Um, so he's going to target the closest victims, which is going to be these guys, and then he's going to attack. Yeah. So he's going to 
going to come over here and attack. Which means Bloodlust goes up by one, which means our first Unleash of Divine Wrath. And with it being all the way up, it is discard all action cards except Atonement and decrease, decrease the Divine Wrath by the number of cards discarded. So at least it decreases it. Uh, do I have an Atonement? Yes, I did buy an Atonement. So I'll keep that. And then I've got to discard everything else. Two, three, four, five, six cards. Six cards get discarded, so one, two, three, four, five, six. All right. Okay, uh, so he's going to panic, or this guy's going to panic. That is a four. So it's gonna go this way. And I will likely follow. Not on this round though, because I've only got one card. All right, so um, the holy man's gone, so there's no upkeep and I'll play my atonement card. Hopefully reduce this atonement by some more. Double success. So I decrease it all the way down to one. And that's my action phase. Um, so now I can buy cards. Uh, so I'm in, I'm in Hans's space. We're definitely going to take our zeros. I'm in Hans's space, so I'm going to take a Furious Strike for four points so that I can at least attack him real quick before I run because I'm going to also take a Sprint card. And then all of these go back over here. All right, and now it is Hans's turn. He's of course going to attack me, which is a problem. He does three damage. And I have no guard cards, so three damage. And then a terror card, and I hope he doesn't target me. Okay. So first, all victims adjacent to a sacred space move there. Increase divine wrath by the number of victims at sacred spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then target the closest final girl or um, victim, which in this case, final girl, because I'm in his space. He can move once and then attack once. His attack is three, which is going to kill me. All right, so this could be the end of Lori in the Sacred Groves. And it is. Lori has once again been defeated. <laughs> wow, I'm 0 for 3. Um, and this was a, an extra short one, I believe. Um, so, thanks for watching, and um, come back next week where we will take Lori to, I believe, the Carnival of Blood. Thanks for watching.